Hi friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I am going to give you some idea on somatic structure of fungi. Among the different somatic structures, rhizoids, aprosoria and hosteria are considered most specialized somatic structure of fungi. First somatic structure is rhizoid. The word rhizoid came from two Greek words. Number one is rhiza, and its mean meaning is root. Another is oides, it means like. That means the word rhizoid means root-like structures. These are short root-like filamentous outgrowth of thallus, generally formed in top at the base of small unicellular thalli or small profiles. Rhizoids serve as anchoring for the attachment organ to the substratum and also as an organ of absorption of nutrient from substratum. Rhizoids are short, delicate, filamentous that contain protoplasm, but please try to remember they do not contain nucleus. Rhizoids are most commonly found in lower fungi that belongs to the class Cachodiomycetes. Oomycetes and Gygomycetes. Some species produce many branches of rhizomycelia. This is an extensive rhizoidal system that usually do not contain nuclei but through which nuclei migrate. Most common example is Cladocytrium species. On rhizomycelium, numerous sporangia they develop. Another important somatic structure is aprosoria. It came from the Latin word aprimere, means to freeze against. These are localized swelling of the tip of germ tube or other hyphae that develop in response to contact with host. In this diagram, say this is the conidia. This part is called germ tube immediately after that aprosorium. Now, with the help of this structure, somatic structure, the fungus they used to put pressure on the host cell so that the host cell breakdowns and they penetrate inside the host cell. Immediately after aprosorium, this infection peaks developed. These are considered as a specialized structure for attachment in the early stage of infection. From these, a minute infection peak usually grows and enters the epidermal cell of the host. Many a times, this aprosorium is a symbol of the low structure of hyphal of the germ tube and a facing organ from which a minor infection pain usually grows and enters the epidermal cell of the host. Aprosorium always helps germ tube of the hypha to attach to the surface of the host or substance. These aprosoria are formed from germ tube of uridinals that causes rust fungi, then erysicles that causes polyrinidium and other fungi in their parasitic or the saprophytic stages. In addition to give and courage, this somatic structure that is aprosoria help the fungi in penetrating hyphae the branches to pierce the host tube. In fungi like Calitotrichum falcatum, germ tube from conidia and resulting hyphae from aprosoria on coming in contact with any hard surface like soil. These aprosoria are thought to function as resting structure for many organisms that forms chlamydospores. Another somatic structure is hosteria. The word hosteria came from Latin word hostor, means drinker. These are considered as the most important organ for absorption of nutrient from the host cell. These are lateral outgrowth of intercellular or superficial hyphae that help to absorb food and nutrient from the host cell. In this diagram, after infection peak, this, the structure that is present within the host cell is nothing, this is posterior, which actually help to absorb nutrient from inside the host cell for their growth and development and complete their life cycle. Hosteria may be knob-like, 
or balloon like in shape they may be elongated or branch like a, a miniature root system the high p of obligate parasites of plant like downy mildew powdery mildew or the rust fungi lead like fungus etc they produce as hosteria another important uh, part that is called hypodia or the hypodia that is its plural form is hypodia that came from greek word hypo means weight plus pores foot which is a smaller appendage with one or two cells in gland on an external hypha and function as absorbing structures the terminal cell of hypodia is generally expanded and rounded or the pointy sometimes it produces a hosteria as for example ectophytic fungi meliola aceri they are taking leaves of green plant almost all the hosteria they able to penetrate only in the cell wall but not in the plasma membrane fungi produces different type of thallus or the thallus means the body of the fungus which is generally called thallus or plural it is thallus these are the assimilative body or the soma of a fungus comparatively they are simple growth form lacking differentiation into two stems roots or the leaves despite this apparent simplicity fungi show great diversity in size metabolic activity and organization of their characteristic fructification the thallus is an amboid plasmodium and they lack a true cell wall i mean to say they are having only a hyaloplasm covering in a slime wall like mesomycote it is unicellular with a true wall in some representative tip of other division of fungi like eumycota but typically in eumycota it is composed of hyphae thallus are of many different type number one is eukaryotic thallus this thallus is differentiated into vegetative part that absorb nutrient and a reproductive part that forms reproductive structures that means in eukaryotic thallus you will get two part one is vegetative part that help in absorption of the nutrient and another is reproductive part that forms reproductive structure for the fungus organism like pithium aphorni dermatum they produces eukaryotic thallus next is holocarpic thallus this thallus does not show any differentiation on vegetative as well as reproductive structure like eukaryotic thallus here after a phase of vegetative growth it gets converted into one or more reproductive structure and such thallus are always called holocarpic organism like yeast syncytium and dobiticum they always produces holocarpic thallus next somatic structure is hyphae which is a microscopic fungal filament usually they are tubular they are transparent filament they are branched composed of an outer cell wall and a cavity that is lumen lined or filled with protoplasm including cytoplasm hyphae are divided into compartment of the cells by cross wall called septa and are generally called septae that means with crossed wall or they may be synocytic means aseptic or without any cross wall hyphae of most of the fungi measures from 5 to 10 micrometer a new hypha they generally originate by germinating of some kind of propagulis where a spores which put out one or more bud like processes that is called germination which in turn elongate and become hyphae there is no clear demarcation between a germ tube and a young hyphae that merges imperceptibly into other loosely aggregated somatic hyphae are known as mycelium 
in plural is mycelia when unicellular thallae produces bud cells in succession these may remain attached to one another in an easily dissociated chain known as pseudomycelia as more than one bud may form from an existing cell the chains are often branched the occurrence of pseudomycelium is especially notable in fungi like yeast but some normally filamentous type fungus like mucoral may take a pseudomycelial form in the presence of higher sugar concentration thus one may speak on plasmodial unicellular pseudomycelial or mycelial thela mycelia or plural that is mycelia may be of different type they may be monokaryotic they may be dikaryotic they may be heterokaryotic homokaryotic as well as multinucleotic this monokaryotic mycelia means they are uninucleate mycelia it contains single nucleus that usually form part of the haplophase in the life cycle of the fungi in case of dikaryotic mycelia that means binucleate mycelia they contain pair of nuclei that is dikaryon which denotes the diplophase in the life cycle of fungi homogeneic mycelia here the mycelium contain genetically identical nuclei in case of heterokaryotic mycelia the mycelium contains nuclei of different genetic constituent and in case of multinucleotic mycelium the fungal cell contain more than two nuclei in this diagram this is the example of uh, monokaryotic mycelium where both the nuclei are identical but in case of dikaryotic mycelium the nuclei are not identical fungal tissues like plectenchyma are also considered the important somatic structure the word plectenchyma came from greek word that is plekein means to wave and enchyma means infusion plectenchyma are loosely or compact woven tissues as against the loose hyphae ordinarily found in mycelia this occurs during the certain stages of fungal development there are mainly two type of plectenchyma one is called pseudoparenchyma and another is prosenchyma these are the two diagram of pseudoparenchyma as well as prosenchyma in case of pseudoparenchyma here hyphae are closely packed from this diagram probably it will be more clear to please see the diagram and they are interwoven so that they completely lose their identity pseudoparenchyma always appear as an isodiametric cells giving the tissues a parenchyma like appearance but on the other hand in case of prosenchyma please see this diagram here hyphae are loosely interwoven and lie more or less parallel to each other here hyphae are longitudinally oriented and cell are clearly distinguished from each other parenchyma like prosenchyma as well as pseudo prosenchyma they compose various type of vegetative as well as reproductive structures mainly stroma and sclerotia are two typical example of parenchyma out of these two stroma is usually made up of prosenchyma while sclerotia is made up of pseudo prosenchyma tus tissue and both these i mean to say stroma as well as sclerotia are the important somatic structures of the genus fungi stroma are compact somatic structures like matrices or a pad made up of prosenchyma as already i say these are considered as reproductive structures of fructification and are formed in or on that on the other hand sclerotia 
are cushion shaped resting structures that form from the pseudoparenchyma. They are able to survive in the catastrophic environmental conditions for many years. They can form mycelia or external protein bodies. Generally, a, a sclerotium is a resting body formed by aggregation of the somatic hyphae into dense, rounded, flattened, elongated, or the unshaped dark masses. They are thick walled resting structures which contain food reserves for many days or many years. The sclerotia are the hard structure resistant to unfavorable physical as well as chemical conditions. They may maintain dormant for longer period of time, sometimes for several years or germinate on return of the favorable environmental conditions and they can start attacking the host crop. The sclerotia germination may be mycelogenic or and produces directly the mycelium. Example uh, like sclerotium rhodesi, rajectin solani, then sclerodium sepivorum that causes white rot of onion. Their sclerotia are known as mycelogenous sclerotia. I mean to say they produce directly the mycelium and they can start attacking the host crop in favorable environmental conditions. These sclerotia may be sporogenous and they bear mass of spores. The common example is for Pritisinidia. They produce sporogenous sclerotia. They may be carpogenous, where in they produce a spore that is called fruits or say um, ascocarp or the deciduocarp that bears a stalk. Common example is Clautinia species. Claviceps purpura that causes argotoprite and they, uh, they, they are actually uh, their sclerotia are carpogenous sclerotia. Many a times development of the score curve is generally seen in sclerotinia where stopped cup of the apothecia bearing xi arises from the sclerotia. In claviceps purpura, sclerotia germinate and immediately they give rise to drumstick like structure called perithecial stromata which contain perithecia or the flat shaped cavities within which the XKI are P form. My dear friends, here I am showing a photograph of sclerotia produced by sclerotinia sclerotiorum in the infected plant that is brinjum. By forming this type of structures Organism like Sclerotinia sclerotiorum, Rhizoctinia solani, Sclerotium rolpsi, Claviceps purpura, they can survive for many years either in the soil or in the crop debris. And as and when they used to get the favorable environmental condition, they germinate and they start attacking the susceptible host crop. With this, I would like to end this video so my dear friend i hope you like this video you gathered few information related to somatic structure of the fungi for further knowledge on fungi please keep watching my video thank you